Hello, I am AJX and welcome to our predictions for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, which is this weekend. And I say are because usually I'm joined by the actual host of this, Shogun, but he's on a well-deserved holiday, a very well-deserved holiday. Shogun is incredible and uh, really does deserve uh, a bit of a break. So it's just me. It's just me this week. Hello, everyone. Um, it feels weird because this is obviously not my channel, but there's been a few videos where it's just been me before, and I'm very glad to be here. I'm always glad to uh, be allowed on the Sorgun channel. So, uh, yeah, welcome welcome in, everyone. We are talking the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, which is an interesting one because uh, as a race, you know, I think it's uh, it's been pretty good in the past, but it also has the capability of being pretty awful. <laughs> like sometimes it is a extremely exciting Grand Prix, sometimes it's a extremely boring one. I remember the first ever two Grand Prix held here. The first Grand Prix was like extremely boring, like nothing happened. And then the second one was a banger. There was like loads of incidents and like loads of drama. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of stuff over the years here, especially, you know, you have uh, Hamilton going off in turn 1. Um, you had, uh, I can't, I remember, was it Max Verstappen crashed into a barrier? I think that was the exact same race. He just randomly lost a wheel and crashed into a barrier. Uh, Vettel swiping at Hamilton. Um, I remember the Force India drivers had, uh, had a bit of a scrap here. I think when they were racing point. Um, yeah, so there's been, there's been a bunch of drama at this Grand Prix, and perhaps we're on for more this w year, uh, well, this, yeah, this year and this weekend, because, uh, there's been a lot of stuff in the paddock. Uh, we start off with the biggest news, which is that Adrian Newey has finally announced that he is joining Aston Martin, which I find an especially interesting one. Uh, I think Adrian Newey is obviously a, obviously, uh, the best design on the grid. But I believe he's become the most paid sports person that's not actually an athlete in the world. He's getting a ridiculous salary, which I think compares to, well, beats a lot of uh, football managers out there. And yeah, it's a big, big move for him because obviously Aston Martin are not part of the big four. They are, they are the fifth place team. But, you know, especially when you see McLaren... Red Bull, Ferrari and uh, Mercedes all battling at the top. A lot of people thought he was going to go to Ferrari to join Hamilton and Leclerc next season. But no, he has gone to Aston Martin, staying a bit more at home. And yeah, big, big news. Like this is some of the biggest news that could not be like a driver move. And even then, I reckon only Hamilton moving to Ferrari is bigger this year in terms of actual news articles. So yeah, huge uh, news for F1. And along with that, we've had a few other things uh, that have occurred, including the team orders at McLaren. Now, it's been discussed a lot, including on this podcast. McLaren sort of not doing team orders between Norris and Piastri, and whether or not that's going to affect Norris's uh, chances at the title. In fact, last weekend... I would say was a huge example of that. It was a huge example of, you know, it doesn't look like it's actually going to work out for Norris. And uh, yeah, so I definitely think that that's uh, big news for this weekend because if they actually do team orders and follow through on everything, then perhaps, you know, uh, Lando, I think I said Verstappen, sorry, Lando Norris is going to have a better chance at the title. The other big news is that Oli Berman is taking over from Magnussen. I think we talked about this last week. It was already announced. Uh, but yes, Oli Berman is coming in to take over from Magnussen, who is banned for this uh, one race after getting too many points on his license, which is very fun because obviously I love Oli Berman, uh, being a British driver and all. But also, uh, that means Magnussen's going to come back with zero points on his license. And that's going to be chaotic as always. But that being said, we are going to now head in to the Grand Prix. And what we what are our predictions? Obviously, Sorgun isn't here, but Sorgun on the plane sent me his uh, predictions. He has been incredible in setting this all up. So basically, you guys can just watch it and nothing would have changed except he's not here. Um, and we start off with his P5 pick, which is Sainz. 
Uh, interesting pick because obviously science is uh, pretty well known, especially like mid season ish or mid season currently. Um, back in like Austria and the British Grand Prix in Canada, he'd just like suddenly pick up a P5 or P4 out of nowhere, and that was a strat that I kept using to get points. Um, but bear in mind, you know what the Italian the uh, the Italian Grand Prix also good good for him. You know he did he got P four in the end of the race, but did very well throughout the race. Um, so yeah, I think Science is a good pick. Then we have my P five pick. Uh, I'm not going to go through them. Well, we'll we'll swap between them. It shouldn't be confusing. My P5 pick is a difficult one because I think everyone's been pretty good this season. I'm going to go for Hamilton. Uh, he hasn't had the best qualifying. In fact, he's came out and said this week, you know, about his qualifying, saying he's just not very good at it, which uh, is a shocking thing for Hamilton to say. Bear in mind how many poles he's had uh, over the years, but just can't find the groove, especially in these new cars, and uh, is struggling in qualifying, being... Thoroughly beat by his teammate, I believe, in the qualifying form. Um, but you know, it's Lewis Hamilton. He's gonna he's gonna come out back from nowhere. Uh, but I think P five is 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 a reasonable place. I think. Next up, we have in Sorgan's positions Russell, uh, which shouldn't be orange, but you know, we'll we'll deal with that. Um, yes, Russell is in. P4 for Sorgan, and he also will be in P4 for me. Um, and Russell, the Ferrari driver there. Um, yeah, I think uh, Russell is a great pick for P4, and uh, I was going to put him there anyway, I should say, uh, because, again, he's been out doing Hamilton all season. He has been pretty phenomenal when it's come to qualifying in a lot of races, uh, really done very well, but in the actual races, he seems to be struggling I think P4 is a good pick, especially when you look at the top top uh, drivers. But, you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see if that actually occurs. We do differ, however, in P3, because over here we have Piastri for Sorgan. Uh, Piastri, obviously, done incredible this season. Really, really solid. Um, I don't, I, you know... You can't say much else about Piastri because he just has killed it again and again and again. Um, and I think that's a really good pick. I think, uh, especially on this track, the McLaren's are going to be quick, although they've been quick all season. You know, it's not going to make much of a change. But I think that's an interesting pick, at least. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for Verstappen. Now, it's a controversial one, right? Because Verstappen has been not that quick recently you know he did get a p you know, it's only let's actually not get this twisted they had a really bad race in uh italy uh in monza and i think that's going to cloud a lot of people's judgment especially considering the break but you know spa he was the quickest he comes into uh he comes into the grand prix at uh van vort van der vort uh and is pretty pretty quick you know i think he got he got p2 oh yeah he got p2 um so i don't think he's like extremely slow i just think maybe maybe the worst was italy i do think it will get worse but i think for azerbaijan i'm sticking pretty level and saying he'll be okay uh because i think in singapore he's, he's gonna go down the bin now up next for uh Zorgan is lando norris Interesting that he is in purple. There. I think Lando Norris is a great shout uh, for P2. He's been really quick in qualifying, really seems to struggle for P1, or seems to struggle at the start of races over the last few. But like qualifying, he's been consistently fast, um, which is why I'm going to differ. I am going to put Piastri there. My, change, my thoughts aren't changing there. I do think Norris has tended to be quick in qualifying. And that's why I'm going to put them there. But a shock for Sorgan as he puts Charles Leclerc in P1, which uh, makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense um, considering how quick Leclerc was, considering Sorgan but loves Leclerc quite a lot. Uh, and obviously, last race, if you look down here, got 
the secretive first place there, which uh, worked out very well for him. So, yeah, good shout. Good shout there. I'm going to put Norris because, as I say, he's been very quick uh, in that car in quality, and I think that's a good pick uh, just to keep my points up. Because if we look at the points, I'm on 60. So Ogun is on 54. But don't let that change anything. So Ogun often... I'm pretty sure he was quite far behind this time last year. There's a lot of races left, as we can see. We are through the season quite a bit, but there's, you know, still one one third of the season left. So it'll be interesting to see how many points we can pick up for the rest of the races. Let's jump into the race. And we start with Sorgan again, who has decided to put Russell in his P5 spot, just losing a position. Which is unlike Russell in recent races. You know, he lost a lot of positions. Not really due to his own faults. But he lost a lot of positions recently. Um, so, interesting to be put there. Meanwhile, I am going for something a bit different. I, I'm going to mix up, basically, my grid. I'm going to put Verstappen in uh, this P3 spot, uh, P5 spot. That's not because I think Verstappen's going to end up there, per se. But it's more that I'm trying to hedge my bets between two different things. I don't think he's going to start P3 and end up P5, although entirely possible. I more think that it's like a, he could start P3, it could be a good race, or he could start like P7 and end up in P5. So I'm sort of hedging my bets there on what I'm doing. A little bit of a, a bad strat or a cheeky strat, should we say. Um, but uh, Sykes is Sorgan's p Four pick, which is decent enough. Again, science is always a good pick to put up there. I've done it many a time. Whereas I'm going for... I think I'm going to go for Leclerc. Uh, again, just a little bit of hedge of hedging my bets. Hedging my bets where people are going to come, where different people are going to end up. And I do think Leclerc is going to end up in that P4 spot. Now, we go into the top three... Where, interestingly, again, staying to true to form, Piastri. So Piastri gains no positions in Sorgun's uh, laps. It's an interesting idea. Will that actually occur? Meanwhile, I'm going for Piastri as well. Just an interesting one there for me as well. Just because like, he has come third quite a lot uh, this season, I think. And uh, thinking of last race, people had different strats and so on. If he's having to now protect Norris, it's going to be a difficult one to like protect Norris and still come piece two. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there in third. Again, I don't think he's going to drop a position, but I'm hedging my bets between everything. And then we go to uh, Sorgan, who's picked Charles Leclerc for P4. Uh, uh, sorry, P2. Losing a position. It's a bit different from last week where he predicted Charles Leclerc to be P3 and then he ended up P1. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a respectable one because Norris is, of course, his P1. Uh, I did skip a two there. I'm going for something a bit different, if you haven't been able to tell. Um, it's really difficult, right? Because I'm picking between the two Mercedes drivers here now for who I think is going to be P2. I am just going to put Hamilton because I think if he can have a decent qualifying, he has the capability of P2, whereas Russell's luck throughout the season has just been like in and off. But again, it literally is a flip of the coin now. I'm literally just putting Hamilton over him because Hamilton's got more world titles. I also put Norris in P1. Um, so yeah, interesting there. But we go on to fastest lap, which is a Norris point four. Sorgan, whereas I'm going for something again a little bit different. I think fastest lap will go to Lewis Hamilton. Again, not sure if that's because he'll be in P2 or he'll be like seventh and a bit far off. So I just want to like try and put my points in different baskets. That's what I'm trying to do here. Bit of a cheeky strategy. Uh, but we're trying it. We're trying it. Most impressive drive. Well, actually, sorry, we have to start. With the least impressive team, which for Sorgan is Red Bull Racing. A very interesting strat. I forgot I could just copy and paste, can't I? We could just do this. Hello. 
Um, Red Bull racing for least impressive team. Um, that's an interesting one because I think Red Bull have been poor so far in the the course of this season, but I still just don't think they're going to be that poor coming into this race. Um, I think, you know, after the last Grand Prix, can it get worse? Probably, but I don't think it'll get worse yet, is my thinking. And I think Max might get a decent position, although, you know, they should be in first. I'm going for Aston Martin instead. I think all the hype around Aston Martin and Adrian Newey coming in, it would be very, very funny and very ironic if suddenly, you know, they're in last or they're very far back compared to where they should be, which is pretty much ninth and tenth. That's what they should be getting. You know, a few drops out of there. It's okay. A few high up positions, great. But that is where they should be coming. Um, least impressive driver, uh, which uh, Sorgan has gone for Ocon, which I found an interesting one. Ocon uh previously done well in this track i think um i might be getting him confused with someone else there but i think uh it's an interesting pick there whereas i'm going for someone who has done well on this track but i don't think will again this season uh, i'm going for lance stroll that's because i think just just based off like vibes alone lance stroll sort of has a chance at it but again, I think it makes a lot better press headline if Lance Stroll does an awful race. And it's like, oh, they've they've paid so much for Newey, you know, and they've still got Lance Stroll there. Maybe they could bring in Max Verstappen. There's rumours already going about. Um, so, yeah, I thought that'd be an interesting pick. And most impressive driver we move on to now, which uh, he isn't here. Because, of course... Oh, no, he is here. He's already here. Wonderful. Uh, Oli Behrman will be our most impressive driver for Sorgan. Decent pick. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, would it happen? I reckon so. I reckon he has a good chance. I reckon he re has a really good chance of doing well this race. I was thinking about putting Haas in my least impressive team just because I feel like maybe a disaster card is on the on the line. But honestly, if Behrman just, like... If Behrman outdoes... Holkenberg it is like a, maybe a most impressive driver type beat. Um, so I'm very tempted to fit to, for myself to put him there. But I'm going to try and go a bit different. I'm going to go for Yuki. Uh, he's uh, done me well in the past. I think uh, he'll have a good race here this weekend. Very tempted to put Russell in there and be like, oh, you know. Um, that's the wrong spot for both of those. My apologies. Most impressive drivers down here. We instead go to most impressive team. Um, let me grab this. My bad, my bad. Uh, you can tell that I'm not the one who does this usually. Instead, we go to most impressive team. And uh, for Sorgan, that has been the one and only. I have to look down. Oh, it's Haas. It's Haas. Haas is a good shell. Especially with Behrman. And honestly, Behrman and Hulkenberg. I wish it would be a combo we'd see more. We probably won't. Um, sadly. So uh, that's going to be a real shame. But um, yeah. You know, it's one of those things. And I'm going to put Mercedes as my most impressive team. Again, just putting my eggs in a lot of baskets is what I'm doing this race. He could get loads of points from what he's done. I could get None from what I've done, you know, it's just how it is. Now, for the extra bold prediction, there has been a lot written here, so I'm going to write it all down. Uh, McLaren overtakes Red Bull Racing and Ferrari, uh, Ferrari and Mercedes close the gap to Red Bull Racing in World Constructors Championships. Very wordy, but basically Red Bull Racing have a bad race. Is that That's the prediction there. It's for sort of a two-time prediction, but uh, I'll, be t I'll be paying attention to that because say Ferrari, like, one Ferrari driver does well and one Ferrari driver does badly and Perez and uh, Verstappen get more points than that first Ferrari driver. I'm going to pay attention to that because that's a specific wording there, Sorgan. And uh, surprise, I'll be here next week doing the reaction. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And uh, my bold prediction. Now, this is, this is a difficult one, right? Because usually I'd go for Magnussen. Um, but I'm going to go for like, 
I'm going to go red flag. I'm going to go racist red flagged once. Just just a singular time, the race is red flagged. I think that's going to happen. It's happened here before. It's a, it's a very tricky track, a very narrow track. I mean, the castle section, if you crash there, you're screwed. We have a lot of new drivers to the grid. I mean, you have Behrman, who's driving for the second time. You have... Um, Colbert, I, I cannot, I'm completely messed up his name. I apologise to all the fans from Argentina and to him. Um, can I find it? No, I can't, sadly. Sadly, I can't find the exact way to say it. Um, but we have a lot of new drivers. I just think it's going to happen. It's a very tricky grid. It's a very, very tricky grid. Um, so, yeah, that is our predictions for this next race i uh, hope you have enjoyed please remember to subscribe if you had and like the video and comment down below what your thoughts on this grand prix are and uh, yeah i will see you in the next one very looking forward to it big love to sorgan for letting me do this and peace